having coffee one day and he says, you know, you putt awful good. And I says, well, you should have seen me before I made my putter. When he talked to me and said I ought to get in the business, I never dreamed this would end up this way. first putter we made, uh, when we hit a ball, it said ping. So uh, we got the name for our golf clubs because the people said, listen to that ping, listen to that ping. So what other name could I give it? So ping it is. I went to uh, uh, 10 pro shops and uh, I got uh, nine orders for one putter. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's better than none. <laughs> so the next thing that happened, uh, six months later, I went out there to see how they were selling. And the, they had eight of the putters still left on the shelf. <laughs> none of the pros wanted to buy it. And I thought, well, there's something wrong. And so, uh, I turned around and decided that what I'd do is make some ver variations of this putter. So I made one with a back on it like that, so it looked like a mallet. And then I discovered that whenever I hit a ball with this uh, putter, I couldn't, I, all I did is get backspin. It didn't roll. And the reason is, is all the weight was up here, see? And so when you hit this ball, this thing would, mo this move down, this head would just go like that. So what I did is move this down here and then brought this back here. And now I had the weight on the bottom. So every time I hit, the, uh, hit a ball here, this thing would go up this way and it, puts, it would roll that ball. <laughs> There was an ad in the paper that said uh, Bridgeport Mill and Troike Turntable. Now that means nothing to some of you, but it happens to be just the machine that I needed. So I went down to the bank and I put a, first I put a $50 deposit on it and then run back to the bank and talk to him for, oh, quite a while because he didn't want to loan me the money. And I thought, well, I work for GE, you know, they wouldn't have to worry. <laughs> and I only want to borrow $1,100. <laughs> and anyway, finally, he said, well, I'm going to do it this time. He says, but don't look for it again. Uh, what's happened, though, I haven't had to borrow any money since. <laughs> You can see if all the weight is in the middle of the club and you you hit this thing and goes like that. Here it's solid, see? Well now, if you have it the opposite way, in other words where you got the weight out on the heel and toe, that keeps it, uh, keeps it in line because if you hit here, it just is a dead shot. In other words, it don't give you the distance. Well, when I started working on irons, I thought, well, well, what happened is they put weight here and weight here. In other words, they never took care of the weight here and here. In other words, they, they had the toe and heel, but you'd, in other words, if you'd hit at the bottom of it, it'd go like that. In other words, it would just turn. And then they'd do that. Well, so what I've done is I put, you know, uh, a rib around here and then I turn around and try to get extra weight in the toe. And some people say, well, that toe is too high. You know, well, the reason I put it up there high is so that the farther apart these weights are, and then the sole gets a lot of weight in because it has a lot of depth. The thoughts I had is that if you put perimeter weighting around the club, it would it'd give you a chance to miss hit it and still make a good shot. Now, 
Some people don't understand what happens to shafts. And they always, well, like, uh, they say, well, that's a good flex. They want, to, they want a shaft with lots of flex, or too much flex, or not enough flex. So they'll weigh and see how stiff it is. And uh, if I put a ball out here just to see what happens, and I move this down a couple inches, where does the ball go? Well, it didn't go anywhere. Well, that's lots of flex. Got a lot of power. <laughs> <laughs> well, now if I take it here, I'll move it. Say a quarter of an inch, it goes that far. See, maybe I maybe I haven't got this quite right, but it's doing a lot better, isn't it, than the, the end of it? So actually, maybe it should be here. Oh, what happened there? was a flex of the shaft, I guess, huh? <laughs> <laughs>
And now last week I saw someone bury his uh, six iron in the ground, right, because the head flew off. It wasn't a ping, fortunately. <laughs> but anyway, when you think of how powerful that ball is, how it influences your mind and makes you think of bad things instead of good things, what a pleasure it is when you can play with good clubs and score well. The person to person is the best form of advertising, but where in the world can you find a business like the golf business? You play for, say, four hours with three other partners, and if you like your clubs, that alone speaks for itself. In other words, I want to give you a set where you'll enjoy playing with it. And uh, the lower scores you get, of course, the happier you are. Well, the greatest satisfaction is meeting people that are happy with my clubs. And uh, it's just such a thrill when somebody comes up and says, I'm glad you made those clubs. Third is Karsten Manufacturing Company of Phoenix, Arizona. Karsten Solheim, President Accepting. It's my privilege to present you with the Ernie Sabrak Award for your lifetime contributions to the golf industry. That's a pretty nice reception, and I understand that's because you know that they. Uh, they love you for all the nice things you've done for this community and for the Thunderbirds. I think it's a marvelous thing. I know you've seen me play, and that's why you don't give me a paint putter. We played together, and I know you offered me a little money not to use your clubs. This year I accept. Anyway, this is a great honor that's yours, right there. And I want to thank you for this wonderful celebration that you honored me with because it's something that I couldn't do in my own rights. It's something that is a gift. In other words, when the trees grow and the grass grows and all these things grow, you've got to know there's something other than just yourself in this world. And I thank you again. In its 50 years, Ping has left its mark from tea to green with game-changing innovations. Its pioneering role in transforming the carry bag can be traced to the top college golf teams. Since the mid-80s, the Ping lightweight carry bag has been the top choice of college and junior players. I designed a bag stand that was activated when the bag was set on the ground. It was very simple, but at the time, stands were perceived to be for old men. So I sent some bags to the Oklahoma State University golf team. Once the other schools saw Oklahoma State with them, they all had to have them too. Today, Ping engineers approach golf bag design with the same vigor as a golf club. And nearly 25 years after its introduction, more college and junior golfers put their clubs and trust in a Ping carry bag than any other.